Hi there, it's Miles Lundy, uh, personal trainer from Good Life at Good Life Glenelg, and I've put together a bit of a um, video here, which is all about the six reasons why you're probably, if you're not going to the gym, if you've been a bit slack lately, the last couple of weeks, up to a couple of months, and maybe even years, the six reasons why, uh, the most common reasons uh, why that happens, and then also what to do about it. So I'm just gonna provide a bit of um, value in that space. Um, the first one is, by the way, I'm gonna look sideways here a little bit. It's not that I'm not paying attention to. I've got my um, little cheat sheet of notes to help make sure I uh, remember everything to say. Um, the first one is you're not getting results. The reason why you're not going is because you're not getting results. And that reason, um, to be a couple of those, you have either unrealistic expectations um, about how fast you can get the results, um, or you've gone too hard too early, which is just a not, you're just not sustainable. So whenever you join a gym, if you've done it recently, or started a new exercise routine, even at home, people tend to go really hard the first week or two, and then die in the ass fairly quickly after that. And you know, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they haven't really made it sustainable in their life. They haven't made it a plan that's something they can do ongoing. You get too excited too early, and um, the results, as I'm sure you know by now, do not come overnight, and they take some time. And that le leads into the second part is about the unrealistic expectations. If you have these unrealistic expectations, like you join the gym and think you're gonna lose 10 kilos in a few weeks, it's just not the reality. I mean, it's certainly possible to do that, but it's not um, what's sustainable um, nor desired, really. So, you know, if you're going to try to lose 10 kilos, 20 kilos, whatever you've got, you know, you're going to average for about half a kilo a week. You really have to just sit at that baseline. I know it can be frighteningly slow paced sometimes. In some weeks, you're going to weigh in and measure yourself and go, God, nothing's happened, nothing's changed. And so that can be quite demotivating. But the main thing to do is to be patient. It's gonna happen, you just need to keep going. Otherwise, if you don't keep going, clearly you're not gonna get the result and um, motivation will be even harder to come by. So that's the first one is that you're not getting results and so you're not made, motivated to go. The next one is you can't find the time. So you're too busy, too much going on in life those kinds of reasons, um, that's just code for you haven't prioritized it. Sure, there's moments in your life that get super hectic and you can't do it for maybe a, a few days, a week, whatever, um, or if you're going through a high stress state, I get that, uh, but really what we're talking about is the ongoing part of that. And that's just code saying I don't have time is code for I haven't made it a priority in my life. Because of course, you and I have all the same time there is. That's probably one of the most consistent things in life. We all have 24 hours a day, no one has any more or less than that. You can't buy it, um, so you've only got so much time with that. So you have the time, it's just what do you do with that time and how are you prioritizing that? Uh, my best guide idea for that is something I put together before in the past and I've gotten people to do, which is called a time audit. It's just literally looking at the 24 hours in your day and accounting for each, maybe not each minute, but each half hour or hour thereabouts. It's a powerful tool to do something like that. So literally go from the moment you wake up until the moment you wake, uh, uh, go to bed and even the moment before you wake up the next day. What do you do with that time? How are you spending that time? Seriously, write down like, see if you get up 6 a.m., write on a, get a sheet of paper, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., like go all the way through, even through the sleep cycle as well. And so you can and document what you're actually doing during those times and go, well, shit, is that is that the best value that I'm going to get out of that time? Um, if you're not having time for your health, look, if you're super healthy and you don't do a lot of exercise, I don't care about that necessarily. I mean, uh, I'm all about just getting people healthy. And um, it doesn't matter if that's the form of lifting a bunch of weights, going for a run, um, doing yoga, just doing gardening. I, it's all the same in the long run. It's doing what you like to do that keeps you active enough that's going to get you where to you want to get to so you feel good now and you'll be able to live a long time in the future as well. I and mean, that's, that's what it's all about, right? So those are the main things on that. Um, so I say, highly suggest doing a time audit on yourself. If, you, if you're using the excuse that I don't have time, and I will call it an excuse because um, of course we'll have the same time. Try that time audit. Literally document your day and, and find out somewhere where you can fit it in. Um, the next one is you don't know what to do. So you come in and you might go on the treadmill for a while, might go on the cross trainer, bit of rower, do a few kind of light weight stretches, things, you know, a few push ups or something, but you kind of go, and I, I, I want the result, but I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Um, there are, I mean, there's a thing called Google. If you've ever heard of that, uh, just type it into your search. G-O-O-G-L-E, and it'll come up with a lovely little website, and you can search pretty much anything you want, anything you can possibly think of, um, especially in the health and fitness space. There is a lot of information out there. Uh, YouTube is really good for that. You can get lost in YouTube videos, but I highly recommend 
there's plenty of good ones out there. I'm sure I'll develop one at some point. Don't have one out there at the moment. So I would seriously just Google it, YouTube it, and you will find something good on uh, some base level exercises to do or new ones or exciting ones. I mean, you gotta make it so it's right for you. Um, so that's fantastic. The other thing, of course, you can do is uh, have a training partner who knows what they're doing and get them to come with you. That can be hard though to coordinate times um, and find someone that actually knows enough that can kind of help you out and give you some pointers. Um, the other thing, of course, I'd recommend, me being a personal trainer, is to recommend getting a, someone like myself, a personal trainer. Even if it's just for a few sessions, just to, so you can get a bit of like, okay, I've got a plan here, I know what I'm actually doing, and it feels good, and then maybe you update it every week, or two weeks, or a month, or six weeks, some period of time. I really generally wouldn't go longer than six to eight weeks without some kind of change in your program, because otherwise your body does adapt, adapt to the exercises and you get less benefit from it. And you might also get less enjoyment and be less likely to, to go again if you don't have some kind of variety in that. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is you can uh, hear at Good Life Glenelg and all the Good Lifes, they have uh, exercise classes. So if you're not sure what to do, hell, just jump in an exercise class. I know it can be a bit scary if you haven't done them before or you're, if you've done them before and you want to try something new, but it's a fantastic way. You know, you've got the instructor there, um, doesn't cost you anything extra to do it, comes as part of your membership, and you're able to just follow along and lead instruction from what they have. And I know it's fairly generalized, but hell, you're going to get a better value in that than you are if you just stand in the gym going, I don't know what to do. So I hope that helps on that. The next one is a big one. It's the lack of clarity. Um, so it ties into the other one areas as well, uh, the other issue areas of not reason why you're not going, but the lack of clarity. So you're going, you know what you're doing more or less, um, but you're kind of like, well, I don't really have a plan. I don't really know what my goal is. I'd like to, if you're saying I'd like to lose a few kilos or I'd like to tone up a bit, um, that's not specific enough and your body and your mind will not specifically uh, relate to that and go, well, you don't really know what you want, so I can't really be clear about that, so I'm not gonna push to get the result that you want. I'm not gonna give you the extra effort. I'm not gonna give you that motivation to, and determination um, to show up. So you need that clarity, the clarity in, why are you there in the first place? Why are you here at the gym? Like, why does it matter? We haven't had gyms. We realize gyms have only been around. They're only a new invention in the last less than 100 years. So why, why go to the gym? You can be healthy. People have lived very healthy lives without going to the gym. What is it that you need to get out of the gym? Get specific about that and make it to, as emotional as possible. That will be a really important one. So the lack of clarity on your goals, um, what specifically are the goals that you want, the direction of, of why that's important to you. Um, you have to have a reason big enough. If your reason for change, if you need some change in your life, in the health and fitness space, if you haven't changed, the reason you haven't changed um, is because you haven't found a reason big enough that you need you need to in order to break through whatever the barrier is that you have. I don't have time, I don't know what I'm doing, um, I don't have money, I don't have, you know, whatever that is. If you haven't found a reason big enough to change, you will never change unless you find a reason big enough to change, which is bigger than whatever excuses that you can pile up. And you know, there's a lot of them out there and I'm not knocking if you have a, uh, an excuse, um, I get it. Like I use them all the time too. So in other areas of my life, but you've got to find it. If you want this, if you want to be serious about that, you got to find a reason. If you don't find that reason, it will not resonate with you. If you don't have it resonate with you, you will not be motivated to go. So that is a key one, the lack of clarity. The accountability is a big one as well. So literally, if you change nothing else, if you knew nothing else than what you know right now, if you had someone that um, is holding you accountable or is expecting you to show up or has some kind of follow-up with you saying, well, did you do that thing? Did you go to the gym? You know, literally just walking in the door sometimes can be, uh, you know, life-changing. If you just say, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I get there or um, I can't be bothered tonight, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So just literally your goal is to walk in the door. But if you don't have someone there that cares, um, someone that you can share that with, it's all about you and you've internalized everything and you don't actually have anyone that knows what your goals are and why you're going to the gym and that you are actually gonna to go to the gym. It's really important that you actually have that because you're gonna be very much less likely to go. You have to be super self-motivated in, in order to have no accountability partner or anyone there. So some ideas on that. Again, you could um, get a training partner, get a friend, someone that you join and go with. Um, you could attend a class, and the good thing about the classes is it, it tends to be oftentimes similar people that go to the classes each week. And so if you find a class that you like and you go, um, you start socializing with them, get to know them, they'll start expecting you to show up. And if they start expecting you to show up, guess what? You're gonna be more likely to show up, so that's fantastic too. Um, of course, you can always get a personal trainer. 
um, they will, you know, they, that's, that's like what we do. Half of what we do is uh, the accountability side. If we're standing there waiting for you, you know that we're waiting for you. And of course, if you've paid good money for it, we want to leverage all that to make sure you actually show up so you get the result that you need. So those are some suggestions. Um, if you're trouble with it, if you're finding like you think, oh, I don't have any, account actually, I don't have any accountability miles. Like I don't have anyone that cares, you know, they care for you, but they don't care necessarily because you haven't, um, you know, structured away in order to make that make sense and make that like a reality that you have to make some changes in if no one else knows about that but you and you're on your own head tell a friend tell someone you hey i'm going to the gym now what do you think you know oh cool and get them to identify that and guess what because they're going to ask you how's the gym going later on and you don't want to come up with some excuse oh i've been busy and you want to say yeah it's been great and i've been going uh the last one i've got here uh, number six is you feel too far off track so if you've left it too long and you feel like, well, shit, I was getting good results, but God, now I've left it for uh, three weeks, five weeks, six weeks, a year, whatever period of time, insert the period of time there. You feel like, well, it's too far off now. I don't know what I, I don't even know how to get started again. The biggest thing you can do, of course, on that is the mental side. It's not a, it play the long game. What's going to happen? I mean, are you, if you don't go, Clearly, it's not going to get any better, and you're going to keep feeling worse as a result of that, if that's what it is an issue for you now. Play the long game. Think about it long term. Sure, you haven't been in even a year, but what's a year in compared to the 80, 100 years that you're going to live in your life? Like, Just get back on and make the commitment to go again. Don't worry about setting some ridiculously high, oh, if I can't lose 50 kilos, then I'm not going to get started tomorrow. Like, Just get started tomorrow because that will be the path towards getting you the result that you want. So guys, that's the guide. So let's just go quickly over those six. Um, so you're not getting results, so you're not motivated, can't find the time, you don't know what to do when you're here, you have the lack of clarity, there is no accountability for you, and you feel like you've gone too far off track, like it's been too long and you haven't been able to um, be in for a while, and so you're just thinking that's oh, too hard, too hard basket now. So that's my guide there um, for you. Hope that's been uh, helpful, and I look forward to seeing you around. Thank mm -hmm. you.